Today, I'm sharing an updated in-depth camera tutorial for beginners using your mobile phone to actualize it. And you will learn everything you need to know to start creating your own designs. No matter what you use it for, with Canva, just with your smartphone. Whether it's graphics or short videos for Instagram posts, Facebook Reel, TikTok, Instagram Reels, your brand logo, YouTube, other social media platforms, or your blog and website, Canva has got you covered with some incredible tools and functions. And you can use it for free. Yes, it is a free graphic tool. Once you take your time to watch this video, you will surely know how easy and comfortable it is to design with Canva. Hi, my lovely people. Are you ready? It's Dada Elias, and I welcome you back to my channel, where I help you create better content and grow on social media. I will show you how to create designs, even though you are a beginner from scratch, and create videos content and animated graphics, since a lot of things have changed in Canva. I decided it's time to get you confident with all the amazing functionalities Canva offers to empower you to design yourself. What exactly is Canva? Canva is a cloud-based and free graphic design tool platform that enables users to create a variety of visual content or presentation such as social media graphics, posters, flyers, presentations, ebook, t-shirt design, logos, business cards, and lots more. The following are the benefits of using Canva. I mean, the advantages of using Canva. Number one, Canva is a free platform. Therefore, the greatest things, though, use of Canva is totally free. Whether you want to make interesting graphic design, it is a cost-free design tool. 2. It is user-friendly interface. With Canva's easy-to-use interface and powerful features, you can create eye-catching and engaging visual graphic designs, even for those who have no basic graphic design skills, because of its user-friendly design and vast capability. So, Canva is remarkably simple to use for everyone. 3. Canva automatically saves your work. With the utilization of internet connection data, your designs on Canva are saved and can be easily retrieved whenever it is needed or because of its auto-save feature. 4. It is a drag and drop interface tool. This advantage makes it simple for users to produce designs of professional quality without the requirement for in-depth design expertise or experience. 5. Big Template Library Canva has a sizable template library, from social media graphics to presentations. Therefore, you can effortlessly create professional-looking graphic designs with Canva's built-in templates. 6. Customizable Designs As a Canva user beginners, you can easily edit the inbuilt Canva template and make it your brand design. Therefore, you are good to go to add multiple fonts, colors, and pictures to these template designs. With only a few clicks on your phone, you can quickly share your ideas with the world while customizing them to reflect the look of your company. 7. Video Editing Canva now has the ability to edit videos, giving users the chance to produce beautiful movies for their social media and advertising campaigns. Now let's dive into the screen of my phone, where I will show you the basics of Canva you need to know, so that you begin the journey of your designing graphics like a pro, even though you are a beginner. Come on, let's go. Here is the screen of my phone. 
to make use of Canva, you have to download it on your phone. If you're an Android phone user, you have to go to Play Store and download it there. But if you're a user of iPhone, all you need to do, you go to your Apple Store to have the app downloaded on your device. After downloading the app, then you need to create a free account. How do you go about this? This is the screen of my phone once again. Then you click on Play Store. This is the home page of the Play Store. Then here you type in Canva. Then you search for it. This is the logo of the Canva you can see. Then the next thing you are going to install. You click on install to have it downloaded on your phone. This is it. It's downloading. Let's wait till it finishes downloading. Almost downloading. 99. Now 100%. Then we wait till uh, it installs. Now it is installing on our phone. Now it is installed. The next thing, you click on open. This is it. Now this is the app on our phone it's loading this is what is going to display to you as a beginner who is about making use of canva then all you need to do click on accept all cookies then this is it you can say continue to sign up for free if you already have an account we will log you in but in this case i don't have any account with a uh, canva as a beginner we can sign up with your Google. I mean, if you have Gmail account, you can sign up with it. Or with your Facebook, you can say, continue with uh, Facebook. Or we can also click on continue another way. You click on continue another way. These are the other options we're having there to have uh, access to our signing up with Canva. We're having continue with Microsoft, continue with Clever, continue with email, continue with uh, work email. But in this case, I'm going to make use of my Google. Then you click on Google. These are the Gmails I'm having. I will need to choose one to sign up for the free Canva account. Then I click on this. This is it. Where it takes us to, you can see, it's loading. This is the interface it is going to take you to. What will you be using Canva for? We will use this to recommend design and template especially for you. In this case, is it for students? Large company, teacher, personal, non-profit or charity, small business. But in this case, I'm going to pick a personal. Then this is it. You can see, you are welcome to the Canva Hub. In this case, you are successfully signed up to the Canva Hub. This is the look of the home page of Canva. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this in details later. To have access to your design, I mean the inbuilt template we're having on Canva, I'm going to explain seven ways to gain access to this. The first one is by making use of your search bar that we're having on the home page of the Canva where we're having search your content on Canva. You just click on it. Then, let's assume in, I want to work on a YouTube thumbnail. Let me just type in thumbnail. You can see that it has suggested a different option for us. We're having YouTube thumbnail, vlog YouTube thumbnail, create a travel vlogger's thumbnail, and so on and so forth. Therefore, I want to make use of a YouTube thumbnail. The next thing, I just click on it. Now it's loading. This is it. Then you can now click on your choice. Click on the one you want to work on. Then you are good to go to begin your design. You have to note that to make use of the first option, I mean the search bar option, you just type in anything you want to lay your hands on. It could be your YouTube. It could be Instagram post. It could be TikTok video, it could be anything. Just type in anything you are thinking of on the search bar. It is going to bring it out for you. Then you are good to go. 
The second way to gain access to the inbuilt Canva template for your design using your smartphone is through the keywords or category section underneath the search bar. I mean all these sections as in the categories we're having there, all these keywords, look at it. If you click on social media, you click on videos, you click on presentation, you click on docs, whiteboard, the website. If you click on more, it is going to display all other things we're having under this. Look at it. We're having photo colleges, infographics, desktop wallpaper, graphs, book covers, mind maps, magazine covers, and so on and so forth. Now, let me go back to this. If I'm okay with anyone I prefer here, then I can now click on uh, see all. I click on this see all to have access to everything. Then the same thing here, the same thing with this. Let me give a sample of this. Let me click on see all. It is loading. So it is going to display all the templates we're having under infographics. These are different infographics we're having under these uh, very particular categories. Now let me go back. That is the sample of this. Then if I prefer the photo colleges, I click on see all. That is how you are going to do it. Now let me go back to this. This very particular social media, if I should click on it, this is what we are going to have. We are going to have a different section on social media. We're having popular. Look at it. Under the popular, these are those things we're having there from Facebook cover, Instagram Ray, TikTok video, YouTube thumbnail, YouTube intro, and so on and so forth. Now, if as you click on Instagram, this is what we're having here. We're having Instagram posts, Instagram story, Instagram ads, and so on and so forth. And if I should scroll it through this place, this is what we are going to have there. Then I click on Facebook. We are going to have uh, different templates with different categories under the Facebook, from Facebook post, Facebook covers, Facebook ads, Facebook event covers, Facebook videos, Facebook stories, and so on and so forth. We have it here as well. Then, this is LinkedIn. If you click on it, this is what we're having under the LinkedIn as well. You are good to go by clicking any of your choice. Then, you customize and make edit to the template. But don't worry. I'm still coming to that on how to customize and make edit to our templates. This is the third way to access our inbuilt Canva template for your design using your phone. This is it. I mean the third one. Where we're having, you might want to try. It is categorized as suggested headings or suggested section that we're having here. Look at it. We're having doc. We're having mobile video. We're having video. We have YouTube thumbnail. We have poster portrait. We have Instagram post square. We have Instagram story, phone wallpaper. We're having logo. We're having business card. We're having card landscape. We're having photo college portrait. We have them all and so on and so forth. Now, this is where we have access to this. You can now click any of your choice. Look at it. This is t-shirt as well. If I'm okay with any one of them, I can now click on it. Let me click on the t-shirt design. I click on it. These are the design we're having here. Let us zoom in. I want to make a particular design on the t-shirt. This is where I'm going to make the design. I can now click on any one I prefer. But I need to ship in this. You can see all these templates we're having some with the crown icon. You can see all these are pro version. If you click on this, it means you have to subscribe to the pro version of the Canva where you will pay for the subscription. In the case whereby you have some template where there's no crown icon, all those ones are free. They are free to be used. Look at it. Okay, this is free. This is free. This is free as well. This is free. But this is pro. And we're having some that are free as well. So you are good to go to play around with all these very particular templates and try to choose your choice. So that is it. By the time you play around with all these uh, very particular templates, you understand better of what I'm trying to say. Look at it. We're having style, theme, feature, grade, subject, topic, and so on and so forth. We're having all these for all the templates, all the categories. Now, let me go back to the home page. 
so this is it if i prefer video i click on this as well if i prefer poster or if i want to work on instagram post that is how to navigate with all these very particular section the fourth way to gain access to the inbuilt canva template in case you want to make your design with your smartphone it is the section i mean the category we are having immediately after the recent designs this is it this is our recent design look at it now this is what i'm referring to look at it we have an instagram post if you want to have access to all the instagram posts you click on see all this here then the same thing you scroll up your stories then you click on see all to have access to everything then this is logo you click on logo to have access to all the logos then this is facebook posts we're having flyers we're having instagram posts we're having posters we're having mobile videos we're having invitation t-shirt youtube thumbnail photo colleges and so on and so forth if i'm okay with any one of them for instance let me click on see how to have access to all the logos it's loading these are all the logos we're having here you can see all these are pro these are pro but this is free this is free as well this is also free why this one is pro we're having pro templates likewise a free template you have good to go to lay your hands on the free template by playing around them to make customization to them by editing them in such a way that you edit the template to look like your brand and that is the fourth way i will move to the next one the fifth way to have access to the inbuilt canva template if you want to have your design is through this very particular template we're having at the bottom of the home page of the canva this is it then you click on it click on templates it is loading this is it you can see let me start from here recommended you can see then we're having a uh, mobile videos videos youtube thumbnail posters instagram posts instagram stories and so on and so forth let me click on the presentation you are going to have uh, categories of uh, presentation templates here this is it you can see then the same thing if i should click on social media these are the templates we're having under social medias then i click on video this is it these are the videos we're having there you can see facebook videos video message mobile video youtube videos video colleges youtube videos and so on and so forth now these are the videos we have in there then i click on more this is it these are these you can see we have work calendar infographics photo colleges desktop wallpaper we have in graph book covers mind map magazine cover zoom virtual background website calendars and so on and so forth you can see there were many this is another way to access your canva templates the same thing if you scroll up you are going to see all these look at it by the time you scroll up you try to play around all these look at it we're having instagram post just click on see how to have access to everything your stories logos facebook post flyers instagram stories and so on and so forth that is how to have uh, access to these by the time you play around with this you understand better of these very particular features this is the sixth way to gain access to the inbuilt canva template in case you want to make any graphic design you are going to have access to the inbuilt canva template via this menu icon we're having at the upper left hand side of the home page you click on this you are going to have all these don't worry i'm still coming to discuss all this with us then you click on templates this is it you can see then if you should click on social media you can see you can see these are all the templates we have in here you can see from instagram instagram stories instagram reads facebook covers facebook ads your stories tiktok videos pin interest pins linkedin animated social media and so on and so forth now if i should click on the social media 
you can see these are what we're having here these are all we are having there instagram post instagram story and so on and so forth now let me go back to the other one let me click on marketing we are going to have access to all the templates we're having here as well you can see we are having business cards flyers logos posters brochures menus newsletters infographics these are what we have in here by the time you click on this you are going to have all i've mentioned above look at it if i'm now okay with it i can now click on any one of them i click on logos now it's loading you can see these are the logos and if i want to pick business card i click on business card it is loading these are the business cards we are having there that is the sixth one now i will move to the last one i mean the seventh one let me go back to the home page of the camphor this is the seventh way of gaining access to the inbuilt camphor template in case we want to make any design through our phone now this is it this very particular purple circle that we have in plus sign in it at the bottom of the home page of the camphor then you click on it now this is it it is loading this is it you can see we have a the suggested one we have a doc mobile video we have a presentation phone wallpaper poster portrait instagram post instagram story logo business card tiktok story we have a t-shirt resume invitation and so on and so forth or you click on this search bar to have access to them now that is the seventh way of doing this as a beginner when it's come to graphic designing making use of your canva you need to understand this very particular menu bar at the home page of the canva now let me click on it i click on it now it's loading this is it now look at it first of all look at where we are having bell icon that is where you have uh, any notification if you have any notification this is where we are going to have it then the next one i'm going to discuss is the ice make concept this is my gmail account i use to register the free account i'm using for the camphor now the magic studio we're having it at the home page of the camphor this is it here we're having it here i'm coming to explain it the project we're having here i will explain that later then i've explained the templates that this brand is meant for a canva pro user then we're having apps or well, because we're a beginner I don't want to convince us don't worry by the time you are making use of it you are going to understand better of this then create a team then this trash anything you don't want probably you've make a design i discover that uh, you don't want it once you click on that design we are going to have it on this trash i have some certain deleted design there the same thing if you click on settings this is where we have setting for the camphor. You can see personal. It is people, subscription, SSO and provision, reports, purchase history, and so on and so forth. Private setting, the login and security, your account. These are what we are having under the settings. Then get app. That is how to go about uh, this very particular menu. Then if I should click on this drop down arrow that we're having in front of uh, my account i speak concept let me click on it this is what we are going to have here if i want to sign out of this very particular app i just click on sign out look at it it is going to sign out my account from this very particular app you can see if i want to enter again i go through this very particular continue with google where it is going to display the gmail account then i will now click on it to have access to the camphor all right the 
project or probably the sign or your work that you've laid your hands on, the one you have done previously or probably the one you are doing presently, where could you get them? How do you assess them? I'm going to discuss three ways in this tutorial on how to get this very particular project. The first one is that here you can see where we're having recent designs. This is the place where you have all your work. The one you have done all the designs. Then when you click on see all here, you are going to have access to everything. These are the work. These are the projects. You can see all the projects I've been doing on this very particular Canva account. This is where I have them. Now, the second way is that the project will have another need here. At the bottom of the home page of the Canva, here, the project, you click on it. So that is the second way. Once you click on it, you are going to have all the project displayed. Look at it. This is it. We are having them here. You can see. These are the projects. These are the projects. If I click on show more, you are going to have them here. You can see. Then you continue clicking on show more. Then these are the videos I've done in the past. This is where you have uh, everything. The third one I'll be mentioning is this very particular menu. If you click on the menu at the home page of the Canva, you are going to have it here. Look at it, project, click on projects. Then you can see all projects. You can see these are the projects. The one I've done recently, this is it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then these are the one I've done in the past. So this is where you have all your project look at it if i should click on this uh, very particular one let me click on this so you are going to see the design you can see this is it so these are the three ways in which you can access your design as we all know that uh, canva has an inbuilt uh, template for different dimension as regards uh, the categories of the design they're having on their library. Now, let's assume in a case whereby you want to make a design, but the design you want to make, the dimension or probably the measurement is not here on the Canva template. You have a particular specific uh, measurement or dimension for that uh, design. That is called custom size. That is the size or the measurement or the dimension is quite different from the dimension you are having on the Canva template. Therefore, this is what you are going to do. Just click on this uh, very particular purple circle where we are having plus sign in it. At the bottom, click on it. The next thing you are going to do, click on custom size. Once you click on the dimension here, we are having pixel, inches, millimeter, centimeter if you want it to be in pixel dimension click on it if you want it to be in inches if you want it to be in a millimeter or centimeter it depends on your choice but let's do it this way let me pick pixel now i'm okay with it let's assume i want this to be 400 then the height i want it to be 800 pixel the next thing I'm going to click on create design. It is going to bring the measurement we've uh, inserted. You can see the measurement or the dimension I've uh, inserted. This is it. From here, you are good to go to begin your design. This is how to go about this. To master the Canva editor panel in the workplace area of the Canva. I will walk you through the major seven Canva editor panels on the workplace area of Canva. These seven panels will ease your customization and edit on the Canva inbuilt template and the blank page. So you are good to go to design graphics like a pro with these panels. Number one, the top editor panels or tools such as redo and undo, three dotted icon. Download and share icon. Two, 
the bottom and editor panel when the text box is selected, such as edit, font, format, etc. Three, the pop-up white edge curve rectangle editor panel around the text box, such as the following icons, pencil, duplicate, delete, etc. Four, the bottom editor panel when the element or object is selected, such as styles, effects, flip, etc. Five, the pop-up white edge curve rectangle editor panel around the element box, such as the following icons, duplicate, delete, three dotted, etc. Six, the bottom editor panel when the design page as a whole is selected, such as replace, animate, layers, etc. Seven, the bottom purple circle with the plus sign editor panel or tools, such as elements, uploads, etc. It is time to edit and customize your design. To ease your editing and customization of your graphic design as a beginner, I will walk you through the several Canva editor panels in the workplace of the Canva app, one after the other. This will make you understand the Canva app for graphics and video editing easily. To actualize this, you will make use of the inbuilt Canva template or a blank page. Now, let's pick the free template. Therefore, we are going to make use of a Facebook post. Now, I click on see all. Now, this is it. Now, I will need to pick the free one. Let me scroll up and choose the one I want to pick. Then, I would love to choose this. I click on this. Now, it's loading. This is it. Now, before laying our hands on the editing, and the customization of the template. This is what I'm going to do. As I have said that I'm going to explain the Canva editor panels one after the other. Therefore, I will move to the first one, the top editor panel or tools bar. One we are having here, these are the first one I'm going to explain. Now, the first thing, this one, I'm going to explain this later. This is the download or share icon the same thing with this i'm going to explain the two later but let me move to the three dotted horizontal line then i click on this this is it now if you look at this very particular area we're having blue modern digital marketing agent here we can change the name of the design let me click here if i want the design to be here let me click on it i want it to be Adex marketing, Adex marketing, Adex marketing Facebook, Facebook posts. You can see, in a nutshell, we use this very particular feature to rename our design. You can see this creates new design. I've explained it when I was, you know, discussing on uh, how to create a custom uh, design. So let me just click on it. You can see. So you just click on custom size. So I don't need to explain this. I've explained this uh, previously. Then I click on the three dotted line. Then if you see here, import files. I'm still going to explain this when I want to explain the importance of upload as a beginner. Let me explain them one after the other. Then here we have resize and magic switch. This one is meant for a Canva Pro user. You can see the crown icon here. So if you are using Pro Fashion, if probably you have a design, you have a particular dimension or measurement for it, and you are done with the measurements, you now want to resize it. You can easily click on this a very particular option or this feature. It is going to resize the design.
that is the work of this. The next thing I'm going to explain is view settings. Then I click on view settings. You can see the first one we're having here is a show page thumbnail. But before moving to that, let me quickly ex explain this to us. Look at this very particular design. If you look at the bottom, immediately where we're having the purple circle and this very particular white circle, you can see that there's nothing here. But don't worry, let me go back to it. Now, if I should click on a uh, few settings, now show page thumbnail. If I should click on it, you can see it has displayed the first page of this very particular design. Therefore, this feature of a uh, show page thumbnail really, you know, enable us to have our pages, our design pages arranged accordingly by displaying them at the bottom of the workplace area of the camphor. Take for instance, if I should add this page, you can see making four pages. That is the essence of a show page thumbnail. You can see that we're having all the designs here. I think we have design there. It is going to display it or probably I have another one here and the last one. Take for instance, you want to make a design or probably you want to make a particular design. You can have it this way by having like two or three pages here and you design different uh, patterns. At the end of the day, you can decide to pick the one you want to make use of. Then show grid fill. Now look at it. The essence of uh, the grid fill is this. If you look at it, the other time I show you the thumbnail, how to fill your design. Look at this one. This one is in form of a grid format. Look at it. This is it. I can decide to have uh, another page. So I just click on the plus sign to add uh, more pages. And if I don't need it, I will just click on delete. So to delete all the pages I've added or created. That is the essence of a uh, show grid fill. This show timeline duration is applicable when you are working on a uh, video making or video editing using your camera. Let me click on it. It is going to show time for each page. You can see if I should click on this, we are going to have uh, five seconds. So this is uh, good while you are working on your video making. Add guides. This is add guides. Let me click on this add guides. Look at it. Look at the lines we're having there. This really helps in the case whereby you are working. Probably you want to insert some pictures here. You have to set your guide. At the end of the day, you later remove it after you might have done with all you want to do. But this will really help you to insert them, to make them fit in perfectly. Or probably you want to make some tabulation. You want to make some certain thing. This will really help you by doing this. If I want it to be 12, you can see or three, or I want to make some lines. Take for instance, let me make this as an example. Then I click on done. This is it. Let's assume I want to make lines there. I can easily click on this. Don't worry. I'm still coming to that to explain this, but just want to give a sample of what I'm trying to say. I want perfect line. Let me click on this. I click on this. Then let me have it like this. Okay, then let me straighten it. Okay, then let me duplicate it. Then I have it here. I duplicate. You can see. You can see as I'm duplicating. If I want perfect measurement, that is the essence of uh, this very particular grid. Now, I've inserted the lines. This is it, but I want to remove the guides. I cannot click on this three dotted line. Then I come to few settings. You can see clear guides. I've cleared it. You can see that the line I've inserted still remain. That is the essence of this very particular guide. If you want to have a perfect job, perfect design, probably you want to insert some certain thing, but you want them to have a equal measurement. That is the essence of this. After you might have done with your design, then you cannot remove that uh, guy. Now, that is all I have to say on this. Let me click on show margins. Now, if you observe this very particular area very well, 
you are going to see these dotted rectangle lines. You can see all these uh, dotted lines. They are in form of rectangle. You can see this is the margin of our work, meaning that any design you are making, you mustn't exceed the margin. But this will really help you. Look at the design here. Look at it. If you observe the design, you observe that, uh, look at the digital marketing agency. All the write-ups are within the margin, are inside the margin. That is the essence of uh, margin. Then, show print bleed. Let me click on it. The essence of this is that, if you look at this very well, you observe that at the end of the page, we are having dotted uh, rectangle lines there. That is the uh, print bleed. In case whereby you want to print the design, this is where they are going to cut as a professional printer. Why they are printing? In the case whereby they want to cut the paper in such a way that it will look beautiful. Then we have video playback quality. But well, this is good when you are working on video making or editing. Let me click on it to see what we have in there. You can see low, medium, high, auto. This feature shows the speed rate of the video. That is that. Now, let me go back to the next one. Then we have a check design accessibility. Let me click on it. This is what we're having here, typography. This has to do with the text of the design you are making. Then we're having color contrast, the alternative text. These are what we're having here. The next thing I'll be discussing is language. Then I click on language. You can see it is on English, US. If I want it to be in another language, then you click on this to set it to any language you want. But I prefer that. Now, the next thing, then this save. As we all know that uh, Canva saves our work automatically. If you look at it, the symbol here, it is a cloud symbol, meaning that all our work, irrespective of anything we do, it will be saved automatically through this very particular icon telling us that all our work are being saved on the cloud. The next thing is to discuss on move to folder. Therefore, we need to create a folder so that all our works are being saved in a folder. Take for instance, if you have some designs on Facebook, then you have them on Facebook. If you have some on Facebook ads, let it be on Facebook ads. Or if you have a, a particular design on Instagram, let it be on Instagram folder. Take for instance, but you click on move to folder. If I have a folder already, then I will need to search for, look at it. For instance, we have something there, Facebook projects. But if I don't have a folder yet, then I can now come to this where we have a create new folder. Then you create that new folder. The after you might have done with that, then you click on move to have it saved on the folder. Now, the next thing I'm going to discuss here is make a copy. That is to duplicate that design take for instance that very particular design i'm having there then make a copy make a copy is when you are trying to work on a design and you want to duplicate it you just click on it to have the duplicate of that uh, design then share i'm going to discuss this later then fashion history you can see the crown icon in front of it this is applicable to the pro canva users now because of time, not to waste much of our time, you can see, view all comments, find our replace text, insight app, and so on and so forth. Now, I will need to move to this because of the time frame. What I'm going to discuss now is the two curve arrow we are having here. The first one is facing the right, while the other one is facing the left. Now, as we have it here, let's assume it, this digital, I want it to be trading and probably later I discover that the trading I don't want it there then I'm going to click on the curved arrow that is facing the left the function of this is undo you can see why this the one facing the right is redo that is to retain the changes but in the case whereby I don't want this then I can now click on this then I can now say okay undo that is the function of the two curve arrow we're having at the top side of the home page of the Canva. Now, the last one is this very particular menu. 
Then I click on it. These are what we are having here. You can see. Then if I should click on this very particular plus sign where we are having the purple circle, that is to create the sign. The same thing with how to create a custom design. So I don't need to go to this. I've explained this previously. Create a design. This is a case whereby we want to have a custom design. This address marketing Facebook post is under the Facebook project as a folder. So that is the function of the top editor panels or the tools bars. Then I'll be moving to the second editor panel. I mean the bottom editor panel. When the text box is being selected, take for instance, this is what I'm trying to say. You can see the bottom of the workplace area of the Canva. There's nothing like a editor panel. Let me click on digital. You can see immediately I click on digital. We're having some editor panels here. These are the bottom editor panels I'm referring to when the text box is being selected. You can see. Immediately I click out, you can see it disappears. But once you click on it, it is going to appear. These are the tools that I'll be explaining to us. Now, what is the function of edit that we have in there? Take for instance, this digital, I click on it, you can see that it has been highlighted. That is the essence of the edit. Now, I click on it, I want to change it to drop. You can see, I've changed it to drop. That is the essence or the function of the edit. Aside from that, if I want to, you know, edit or probably change this, if I don't click on this edit, then I can also do it this way. Let me undo it. I can also do it this way. We have digital. If I don't click on the edit, it's a thing. I can just have it this way. I click on this. Then I make sure that the, this is it. Then I can now come here. I delete it manually. Then I can now have a drop. Still the same thing. Then I move to the second one, the font. I click on font. It is going to display varieties of uh, fonts we are having. Now, if you scroll up, look at it, archive, phantom, area, and so on and so forth. We're having some with a crown icon. You can't make use of that one. If you want to make use of it, in that case, you need to, you know, subscribe to the pro fashion of the camphor. Now, other thing I want to discuss here, this very particular font. We observe that we're having a symbol like greater than or arrow in front of it. All this, I'm referring to all this. Take for instance, let assume I click on this gabata, I click on it. These are the family of the fonts. If I want to pick the black, I click on it. If I want, you can see it has changed. If I want it to be black, you can see it is going to change as well to the black. You can see it has changed to the black. Then if I want it to be bold, I click on bold. You can see regular. So if I want the thin, so that is it. That is the essence of the symbol of greater than that we're having in front of each font. This indicates family fonts. If you click on this, let me click on TT Chocolates. You can see bold. Let me click on bold. Then regular, extra bold, light italics. You can see that is the essence of this. Aside from that, another thing I want to discuss on this is that, and if I don't want it, I can pick the one without family. It depends on your choice. You can pick anyone without family. Look at this now. Let me click on this one that is not having family. Let me click on this. You can see this one is not having any family fonts. Now, another thing I want to ship in under this is that if you look at this very particular area, we're having some categories here. Handwriting, corporate, display, headings, paragraph, and so on and so forth. We're having different headings here. I mean the categories. It now depends on the one you want to choose. Let us mean I want uh, this very particular display. If I should click on this display, it means it's going to show all the fonts under this very particular category. Let me click on it. 
these are the fonts we're having under this. So I can now decide any one I want to pick. Let me click on this. You can see, but if I want the font family, I click on the, you can see, boot. Okay, let me go to other fonts, the heading. Then let me click on handwriting. I want this uh, Canva student font. I click on it. You can see it has changed it. Then if I should click on this, you can see that the fonts are changing. Let me click on Beth Ellen. You can see that the fonts are changing. It depends on your choice. Let me go back to the other categories. If I should click on Eddings, now, Blanca. Let me see, send dots. So it depends on your choice. That is the essence of this. And aside from that, the third thing I want to discuss here is that this is a particular search bar we have in there. Let's assume you have a particular font in your mind that you want to make use of. You can easily just come here and type it there. Take for instance, I type in Anton. You can see it's going to display the exact font name I've inserted or typing. So that is how to go about this. We can just play around with the font tools. You are going to understand it better. Then the next one I'm moving to is text styles, where we're having H as the icon. You click on it. This is applicable or it's so good when you are, you know, writing articles. Look at it. You just click on this, the heading. So then the same thing with this, the subheading. If you want it to be body, look at it. This is applicable while you are working on your article writings. That is how to go about this. Then let me move to the next one. We're having font size. You can see that we're having A as the symbol where we're having the font size. Then you click on it. Now, this is the font size. To increase the size, you have to drag the line just drag it to the front. That is, you are dragging it outwardly. Or in the case whereby you want to decrease the font size, you just drag it to the back. That is, you are dragging it inwardly. Another thing I will need to ship in, if you want to increase or probably decrease the font size of the design, if you don't make use of these two, the tools we have in there, I mean these two, these line tools, if you don't make use of it, you can also come to the design. What you need to do, come to where you are having marketing. You are going to see a white small circle on the text box. Now, all you need to do, drag it inwardly. You can see that you have decreased the font size. And if you want to increase it, just, you know, try to expand it. That is how to go about this. You can use either of the two tools. You see that you do it this way, or you make use of the two font size that i explained previously that is how to go about this then i move to the next one which is a color where we're having a and underscore underneath it then i click on color let's mean the digital i want to change it to red just click on that red then you scroll up to change it to the color you want but another thing i want to discuss with us is that if you look at this, this was a particular design. You can see we're having photo colors here, meaning that all the colors we're having on this design, these are the colors. So this really helps if you want to make your design, especially when you don't know how to place the color. Just make sure that you follow this very particular one. Make sure you select your color from this. But in the case whereby you are very good when it's come to, you know, applying color, then you come here to change the color. You can see the, the agency, I can change it to purple. That is how to go about uh, this very particular feature, the fonts. And it happens that at times you might have a particular color or a similar color to a particular color we're looking for. All you need to do, or you want more colors, just click on this very particular plus sign where we're having it in the small white circle. This very particular one, click on it. Then which type of purple you can see. This will show us the different type of purple. You can see. You can see as I'm dragging the button, you know, on the color box. 
and if i want it to be green i can just shift this one you can see i've taken it to the green where we're having the green do i want that green you can see do i want light green so this is the essence of this very particular one and aside from that let me quickly ship in this uh, very particular function look at this pencil icon we're having there it is called color picker if i should click on it now look at the circle we're having there the agency is already highlighted now this is the color if i pick this or let me just bring it here okay the face of the woman that is the color i want i want the agency to be in this color then i click on done you can see it has changed to the particular color i picked then look at it the agency i click on the color picker then i come to this place where we are having this color okay i click on it i just put it there then done you can see that is the essence of the color picker in a nutshell color pickers enable us to make use of the colors we are having on the design so that is the essence of color pickers then another thing i will need to discuss on the color is this very particular s code we are having here where we are having s code here if probably you have a particular s code you can copy it and paste it here then you are going to have the color here the next thing i will be discussing is format where we're having b at the upper side of the facial now let me click on it i click on it if you look at it we're having this very particular b if i click on b it means i want the exact word selected to be bold let me click on it you can see that it is already bold now this very particular b if i click it back again meaning that i don't want it to be bold you can see now this i means italics it's already on italics if i should click it out i click it back you can see that it has taken it away from italics let me click it back i click it you can see it is now on italics now i click on b it is both now this very particular u where we're having a small line under it is underlined let me click on it you can see that the word is underlined you can see can you see it now you can see digital is underlined the next tool i'll be discussing this very particular symbol it is called strike through let me click on the marketing you can see the marketing is already selected let me click on it you can see that marketing is strike through the same thing let me click on agency then i click on it you can see the same thing so that is the work of this very particular one another thing i want to discuss this very particular function where we have a lower case a and upper case a if i should click on it look at it it has changed everything to upper case i mean capital letter then if i should click it back you can see that it has changed it to initial capital that is the work of this you can see that is that now the second line we have it for alignment let me click on digital now if i should click on this i want the words to be aligned at the left hand side of the design but if i should click on this one the one in the middle you can see that digital has been taken to the middle i want it to be aligned at the middle then if i should click on this i want it by the right hand side you can see you can see now let me take it back to the middle then to the left hand side why this one is the same thing as a left hand side the last line we're having there contains bulletin features now if i should click on marketing look at it now this very particular bulletin this one has to do with a dotted uh, mark now if i should click on this you can see look at the marketing then if i should click on agency the same thing you can see the dotted uh, mark why this very particular one this has to do with the number let me click on it it's going to change it to number you can see now if i should click on the marketing you can see it has changed it to number let us mean you have uh, some words that you want to insert bulletins on it probably about uh, five or seven words then you can insert this uh, feature 
That is the function of this very particular format. Then the next thing I'll be moving to is spacing. Now, let me click on it. From there, let me undo. I want to undo this, okay? Now, if I should click on the letter spacing, the first one we're having there, this one indicates spacing in between the letters. Look at it. Look at it. You can see the space we're having in between the letters. That is the essence of the letter spacing. The next thing I'll be discussing is line spacing. To understand the line spacing, this anchor text box, you know, works with it. Let me click on the anchor text box, the one facing downward. Let me click on it. You can see that it has been highlighted. Now, let me drag the line spacing to the front. You can see I drag it outwardly. You can see the movement of the, of the, Wait, you can see. Now, if I should drag it to the back, you can see. So that is the essence of that. Now, if I should click on the one facing up, you observe that the movement of the waves will be moving towards up. Unlike the first one that moved towards the down. Now, that is that. Now, if I should click on the middle, the middle anchor text box, look at it. Look at what happened. You can see. This normalize it. The movement is from both up and down, coming to the middle to meet each other. So that is the essence of the spacing. Then the next thing I will be discussing is this very particular function. I mean, this effect. This tool is very powerful. Therefore, I click on it. You can see the first box we're having here is none. Now the second one is a shadow. I click on it. You can see. This is it. If you look at the way, you can see the shadow there. You can see that media. You can see the shadow. We're having the shadow on the wet. Now, another thing I want to discuss is that that very particular wet. Let's assume I want to work on the shadow. All I need to do, I will need to double click on this very particular tools. Then I double click on it. From here, you cannot play around with it. Take for instance, if you want to change some certain thing here, you are good to go by, you know, working on the offset, direction, blur, transparency, and so on and so forth. You want to change the color of the shadow. Let me click on this. Let me change it to green. You can see that the shadow has been changed to green. And if I want it to be red, you can see, I've changed it to red. It depends on you. Now, I want it to be green. Then the transparency, I can now increase it. You can see, I've put it for 100. Then the offset, it depends, you can see. But the offset, I want it to be 45. This is the direction. It depends. Just try to play around this. You understand better of uh, this very particular feature. You can see that we're having the shadow there. That is the essence of this. Now, let me go back to the other one. The next one is a uh, lift. Let me click on this marketing. I click on lift. Then this is what we're having there. You can see if I should double click there, you can see it depends on how you walk around the features. Now, let me click on the Olu. I double click. It depends. This thickness. If I want the thickness, you can see. Then you just drag the line probably to the back or front. It depends on you. The next one is splice. Let me click on splice. Then I double click. You can see. Immediately I click on splice. Look at the way the word is. Let me undo it. You can see. Now, immediately I introduce this uh, splice, that is what it introduces. Now I double click, then the thickness, I can adjust it here. Then the offset, the color, if I want to change the color, I can change it to red here. It depends, but I prefer the former one. Now, that is how to go about this. The next one is outline, I click on outline, look at it. Look at the way the word is. Now. 
I double click. Then the thickness, if I want it this way or this. Then the color, I can change it to white. Or I change it to green. Or I change it to black. All right. It depends on the way you want it. That is how to go about uh, this very particular feature. The other thing I'll be discussing is echo. You click on echo. This is what is going to display. Then you double click. If you want to work on it, just try to play around it. Then the glitch, the same thing, you double click. You play around it. Then we have a neon. And this one, we have a background. Just click on it. You can see that it has in introduced the background to this. If I want the background, I want to change the color of the background. I can change it to black. All right, you can see that it has introduced it. Then, as regards the background, the roundness, just play around this to change the roundness and the spread. Try to work around this and see to how you can go about it. The next thing I'm going to work on, I've worked on the style. This style has to do with all these effects we're having on this very particular area. Now, the next one I'm moving to is the curve text or coffee text. I'm moving to this shape. I click on this. Then, if I want the way to be on a straight line, this is it. I want it to be straightened. Let me use this one. Okay. Now, look at it. You can actually click on this. You can see that the word has changed to curve one. Now, if I double click it, it depends. You can see. Now, let me bring it here. Now, you can see. You can see the movement. If I drag it to the front, the direction will be coming towards the down. But if I should drag it to the left, you can see the direction. You can see the direction of the weight. So this is very important, most especially when you are working on logo. That is how to go about uh, this very particular feature. Now, if it is on curve and you don't want it to be on curve, click on none. You have it straightened. You can see. That is it. Now, the next thing I'll be discussing is animate. But to cut it short, animate here, it really works while you are working on videos. But anything design, it is not advisable. Just because making use of animate on the static uh, design doesn't work. But while you are working on video making, it is advisable to make use of uh, animate. By the time I want to discuss on video, you understand better of this. But let me just quickly ship in something. Let me click on animate for you to see how it works. Let me click on block. You can see the way it's moving. Let me click on typewriter. Let me click on ascend. Let me click on bounce. Then we have bust. Roll. Then we have merge, we have shift, we have spread, skate, we have breathe, we have fade, we have pan. Look at this flicker, look at this pause, then we have wiggle, and so on and so forth. By the time I move to the video, I will explain better on this. Then the next thing I will be discussing is transparency. Now, let me click on this. You can see, let me click on it. Let me drag it to the back. You can see the effect of the transparency. Look at it. That is transparency for us. The next one I'll be discussing is layers. Now, let me click on it. You can see, this layer shows the way our text or probably the element we're having on the design, how they are being appeared how they are being, you know, laid. So, that is the essence of this. But for us to understand better of this, let me quickly do this. Look at where we're having marketing. You can see that we're having the social media come first. Look at it. This is it. For you to understand better of these layers. Now, look at it. But you click on this marketing and place it here. Don't forget that I'm explaining on the text only. I will have explained it with element, but I'm coming to that. Now, I place it on the text. Look at it. 
I click on the social media. I want the social media to be on the marketing. Look at it. Now I place it here. You can see that the social media has, you know, displayed over the marketing. If you observe it very well, look at it. We're having it on it. Now let me go back and undo. You can see, let me undo it. So you can see that the marketing initially, you can see that the marketing is on it while the social media is behind it. But you understand it very well by the time you mix it up with the element. But that is all I need to say on this. The next thing I will be discussing is position. But don't forget that I'm discussing on the text only. Now, you will get better understanding of this while you mix it up with the element. Well, let me put it this way. Let me put the marketing on it. You can see that we're having the marketing on the social media. Now, let me click on to back. You can see that we're having the marketing behind it. That is the essence of the position. And don't forget that we are under the arrange. If as you click on to front, we're going to have it in the front. Now it has appeared on the front. Now, if as you click on align, meaning that if as you click on this top, I want the marketing to be on top. If as you click middle, it is going to come to the middle. If as you click bottom, I have it at the bottom. If as you click on right, we are going to have it on the right, center, then left. Then if as you click on top, but I want it to be on the center, then I click on center, then I want it to be on the right, I click on right. That is the essence of this. Now if I should click on advance, but in this case, if I want the width or the height or the ratio for a specific dimension, this is where I play around it. That is how to go about it. The next tool I'll be moving to is notch. Now I click on notch. In a notcher, notch is used to move the object or probably text from one place to another. Probably you want to place it on the left or probably on the right or you want to align it or probably you want to make sure that uh, the words or probably the element to fit in the design. That is the essence or probably the work of a notch. Look at it. This very particular marketing, if I should click on the arrow facing front, look at the movement of the words. I just click on it. I long press it. You can long press it. Or if you don't do it that way, let me click on the arrow facing downward. Just be clicking on it. But this waste times. It's moving, but it wastes the time. But instead of that, you just long press it. You can see. And if you want it to the right, long press it. Then if you want it to the left, you long press it to the left. So that is the essence of this very particular feature. The next one I'll be discussing is this very particular three-dotted horizontal line where we're having more under it. Then I click on it. Look at it. This very particular word, if I should click on copy, I want that word to be copy. I click on it. Then I click on paste. I'm going to have it pasted. You can see. That is the essence of uh, copy and paste. Then the next one is select. Let's assume I want to group some words. This is where this works. The first thing is that you are going to select the word. You want to group together. Then after you might have clicked on it, on the design, then you click on select multiple. Then you click on this one. Then I want the social media again, making three. Then the next thing I scroll to this place where we're having group. Then I click on group. It has grouped it together. You can see. You can see that is the essence of this very particular one. I've explained select multiple. Then if I want you to be on group, I click on this. It is now ungrouped. What you're going to do is that just click on the outside of the design. Click on it. You can see. Now, you click on it. By clicking it out, you can see that it is no more grouped. That is the essence of that. Now, let me go back to it. Then the next one, 
we're having comments but i don't want to explain more on this comment but i will explain on this later that this bring forward is more or less like the function of position if i should click on it for you to understand it better let me have it here i've placed this very particular marketing on social media this very particular function is the same thing as that of the position or layers let me click on this bring forward it's already bring forward now if i should click on send backward you can see that we're having the green marketing at the back we're having it behind it now if i should click on bring forward we're having, we're having it in the front or bring front is the same thing now if i should click on send back send to back you can see send backward is the same thing that is the essence of this other particular one this show timing i will explain this later when i'm discussing on the video then the same thing with the link now lock the importance of lock a hey, don't forget that i'm discussing on the text only i didn't be i want to discuss on the old page to log the old page but in this case i want to log the text only then i click on lock you observe that this very particular words is not moving well let me click on this you can see that this is moving then let me click on this this is moving as well but this is not moving meaning that probably the position of the words i don't want it to be affected in that case i need to log the words if i want to do it for several work i can do it this way then i click on marketing then i cannot call me a select words then i click on this i click on this then i cannot come here to lock them now i've locked everything you can see i've locked these two words as well so that is the essence of this you can see i didn't lock this so this is moving so that is the essence of a uh, lock then the alternative text not to waste much of our time then delete i click on delete if i don't want it you can see that is essence of delete then the last one i'll be discussing here is translate text now i click on grow your now i click on translate text now i want it to be let me pick i can type in french or if i don't want french let me come here and scroll up to check for the let me pick a chinese simplified then i come here now i have 48 left if you're a free subscriber of canva user you are going to be given 50 free but for you to have more than 50 you are going to upgrade for more uses now i click on translate let's look at it it is going to translate the words grow your you can see that it has translated it to chinese simplified the same thing with business let me click on business i want to translate business to french let me click on translate text and we should not forget that uh, translate text is a new ai feature on canva now click select language i type in french then okay then i click on translate look at it now so it has finished translating this you can see entry price entry price this is the french for the business now we should not forget that this very particular feature i mean this feature of a translate text is a new ai feature on canva The third editor panel that I will be discussing is the pop-up white edge curve rectangle that appears or probably that surrounds the text box. Immediately it is selected, you can see. This very particular panel is what I'm referring to. Immediately I click on the text. You can see that this very particular panel is around the text box. That is the exact thing I'm referring to. Now, let me begin with this. The first thing I'll be discussing 
is the three dotted horizontal line. If I should click on it, you observe that it is the exact thing we are having here. Let me just put it this way. It is a shortcut to this very particular three dotted horizontal line we are having at the bottom of the workplace area of the Canva. Look at it. If I should click on the three dotted horizontal line, you can see starting from copy, paste and so on and so forth. So the same thing, if I should click on this, we are having the same thing. That is to tell you that it's a shortcut to the three dotted horizontal line we are having at the bottom. The second thing I'm going to discuss here is this very particular icon, delete icon. If I should click on the delete icon, it means I want it to be deleted. Look at it. You can see it has been deleted completely. Now let me undo it. You can see this is it. We're having it here. Now the next one is duplicate icon, meaning that I want to make a copy of this very particular text. So if I should click on it, I click on duplicate. You can see this is it. We're having it here. The function of this very particular icon is duplicate. This pencil icon is a new AI feature on Canva. Therefore, if probably you are working on a ebook or you want to write some certain thing and you are looking for a way of doing this or probably on your design or anything, you can make use of this to generate all this. You can see what we're having under it. Continue writing, summarize, rewrite, more form and so on and so forth. That is the major work of this very particular feature. Take for instance, if I should click on this pencil icon, then to make it formal, let me undo it first. Then to make it formal, let's click on it. You are going to see what it's going to give or you can see. Please consider the management of your social media marketing. That is that for us. Let me undo it. Then let me click on this. Now, let's click on to make it fun, more fun. You can see, take charge of your social media game. If I should click on it, then click on more fun. Master your social media rim like a boss. Continue writing and so on and so forth. At your own convenient time, you can play around these and see to how it works. This is the fourth editor panel that we're having at the bottom of the workplace area of the Canva. Immediately, the element or object is selected. Now, look at it now. This very particular object, I mean the element we're having here, this element, I mean the object of this very particular lady. Let me click on it. Immediately I click on it, you can see what we have in there. Now, the first thing we have in there is replace. Now, if probably you don't need this very particular picture, then you come here, you click on replace. Now, once you click on replace, now we have in gallery, that is some of the images or probably some something I have on my gallery here, then I cannot choose any one of them to replace the picture. If I don't want that, I can come to here where we're having upload. Then what are those things? Probably I've uploaded some certain uh, picture before. Then I come here to, you know, insert any one of them. Then here, photo. These are the photo galleries we're having on Canva. They cannot choose any one of them. The video, this is what we're having there. Now let me go to the upload. Now I want to make use of this very particular picture. Let me click on it. Then you can see that we're having it here. Now this is it. The second thing we have in here is a style. But for you to understand better of this style, I'm going to explain it with another design so that you can understand better of what I'm trying to say. Then you click on this style. Once you click on the style, look at what we have in there. For you to understand this, now this is the border. Then if I should click on the border by moving it to the front, you can see, you can see the border. You can see how the thickness the thickness or the weight of the border now let me take it back now the corner rounding that is the extent of the roundness of the picture or the element you can see that the present roundness is quite different from the previous one now let me take it back so that's the importance of roundness for you now let me fix it for 46 okay now you can see the border color but if i want to probably change the border color i can click on it then 
I have it for probably, let me choose a red. You can see that it has changed. You can see if I want to change it to green or lemon to pink, that is how to go about this very particular, the color of the border. Now, let me go back to this tie for you to understand it. I will need to introduce a line. This very particular object, look at it. If I want this type of line, I can click on it. If I want this, look at what we have in there. You can see, you can see the type of the line. And if it is this, and if I prefer this, I click on this. You can see that as I'm clicking on it, it is changing. Now, if I want it to be this, you can see that is the essence of this very particular function for you. This happens to your, you can see, you can see, or probably if you're having your line, you can also do it when you're having your line. That is that on the style. Now, let me move to the effects. Then I click on effects. You can see, if you're a pro user of Canva, then you have access to this uh, background remover. The same thing with magic eraser and magic expand. But this magic edit is only free, but all of that one are pro fashion. Now, all these are on Magic Studio. Now, let me click on effect here. If I should click on effect, you are going to understand what is going to happen there. Let us zoom in this very particular picture. I want it to have a, a particular color. Then I click on glow tone. I click on glow tone. Okay. Do I want it to be sherry? You can see. All these uh, color. Now let me pick this. Let me pick this. You can see that the border of the element has changed. You can see. You can see. Now let me go back to it. Effect. Now glow tone. And if I want it to be, if I want it for this, if I want it for anyone. Then you can pick any of your choice. Let me pick this. You can see. That is the essence of this very particular feature for us. Now, that is how to go about your effect. Probably a particular element is not having color. And you want to add color to it. This is how to go about uh, this very particular feature. Let me click on this. You can see that it has changed. Now, let me go back to this app. Let me click on app. Now, this is what we're having under the app. This is mock-ups. So, that is that on that. Let me further explain on the effect. Now, I click on the element. I mean the lady. Then, I click on effect. Now, you can see. Then, I click on effect. Then, I can now come to where we're having duo tone. As I've said the other time. Now, if you want to pick this, you can pick this. If you want this, you can pick this. It depends on your choice. If you want to pick this, you pick this, or you want uh, this. It just depends on your choice. But I would prefer choosing this. Let me click on the classic. I prefer the classic. I'm okay with it. Now I'm done with the doton. Then I come here. I want to make white shadow surrounding the lady. Then I click on shadow. The next thing I click on glow, I click one more time. Then the blur amount, I reduce it to zero. Then the next thing I'm going to do, the color, I mean the shadow, I have to make it white. Okay. I'm okay with it. I will make it white. Then the intensity, I will need to make it 100, okay? You can see that the, then the angle, I will need to reduce it. Then the size, I'm okay with it. You can see if I should continue increasing, but I don't want it that way. But I want it this way. I'm okay with it. That is how to go about uh, all those things. And aside from that, if you want it to be, dropped you can click on this but you can see you can see where we are having the shadow but i don't want that i prefer to maintain or retain the glow 
instead of the drop or any other one. You can see how beautiful it is. Very lovely. That is how to go about this. Now, the next thing is filter. Let me click on the filter. But I don't want to waste much of my time here. By the time you are able to play around it, you get better understanding of this very particular thing. Now I click on warm. Look at what we have in there. I click on cool. It depends on the one you want to choose. The vivid. The next thing I'll be discussing is this very particular feature, adjust. I click on adjust. This is it. We're having auto adjust, but I don't want to make use of that. Then I come to where we're having brightness. Okay, the brightness, I want to work on it. Then I increase it a little bit. I'm okay with it. Learn. I want to work on the saturation. Okay, let me increase it a little bit to to okay 48 then let me work on the sharpness it depends on how you want it okay the clarity let me fix it for this okay i'm okay with it and if i know okay you can just play around this and try to work on it that is how to go about uh, adjust the next thing is to crop now i click on crop this is it if you observe it very well you observe that this very particular element the four edges are having white angles as a result of it you can now crop it how do you go about it probably you want to make it uh, smaller you can do it this way you can see then you bring the object here. This is where you have it. Okay. The after you might have done with that, you click on done. You can see. This is the part we want. Now, if you are not okay with it, then you undo. Then aside from that, I click on crop again. If probably you are having a particular aspect ratio, then you click on it. Then you cannot see probably uh free form the one ratio one 16 ratio nine it depends it depends or probably you want to rotate it so you can see if i click on rotate if i want to rotate it then i want it this way look at it i want it this way then i click on done then we have it like this so you can see what we are having there now. You can see. Or because uh, we rotate it. It depends on your choice. Now let me undo it. So that is what we are having there. The, this very particular expand is for a pro fashion user. You might not be opportune to make use of this. Aside from that, if you don't want to crop your object from this very particular icon, you can also do it this way manually by holding onto the angle i mean the edges then you do it this way that is it you just uh, drag it inwardly that is how to go about it you observe that this will enable us to have our element intact without affecting the element but if you drag it inwardly fair the sides automatically it is going to affect the element look at it you can see you can do it this way if you don't want the phone to appear or probably you don't want the phone but in the case whereby you want the exact picture don't do it this way just go to the edges of the element they drag it inwardly but in the case whereby you want to cut some aspect then you cannot come to the sides then you can see by doing it this way if this is what you want then you can do it that way but in the case whereby you want all the picture to appear you just come to the edges to do it but in the case whereby you want to cut some aspect of the element then you come to the side of the element to crop it there that is the function of crop now the next thing is flip i click on flip now if i want the elements to be flipped to the right hand side look at it or the left look at it you can see the phone 
it has changed to the left. Then I click on flip horizontal. You can see that we have it at the right hand side as well. But if I should click on the flip vertical, you see what will happen. Look at it upside down. The same thing with this. That is the work of a flip. Now, another thing is animate. Don't worry. I'm going to explain this while I want to discuss on a video making. Then the next one is transparency. I've explained this to us previously. Look at it. That is a transparency for us. The next thing I'll be discussing here is layers. Now, let me look for it. This is it, layers. Now, if you observe this very particular object very well, I mean the element, we're having it behind the Saba, I mean at the back of the Saba. But if I want it to appear on it, I want it to cover the Saba. This is what I'm going to do. I click on layers. There you can see. Then I come to where we are having the this very particular object. Then I come here. This is it. Then I hold on it. I take it up. I bring it here. You can see. You can see that we're having it on top of the cyber. That is, I want it to cover the cyber. But in the case whereby I don't want it there, probably I want the cyber to appear in front of it. Then I click on the server. Okay. I place it here. You can see that is how to go about that. Then the same thing. Look at this very particular Lyceria and Co. If I should click on it, then this very particular shapes the star. Then I want it to come on it. You can see. I want the star to cover it. You can see that the star has covered it. But if I want the star to uh, be behind it, then I click on the Lyceria, then I click on it. I want it here. You can see that we're having the Lyceria on the star. Now, that is how to go about this. I've explained this a lot. This enables us to arrange our work accordingly. It makes our works to be neat, especially if you want them to appear in a particular way. Aside from that, the same thing with position. Layers and position do the same well, look at it. I click on position. Now, if I should click on to back, look at it. We have it to back. If I say to front, you can see. Now, if I want it this way, now zoom in the other one. I click on this. Then I want it to back to front. Sorry. I click on to front. Then I click on forward or to front. Either of the two. You see that you click on to front or forward. Still the same thing. Then if you click on backward or to back, it's still the same thing. Look at the position of the look at the position of the element. That is how to go about it. Then another thing I want to ship in is this very particular element. Now, for us to understand this, let me make use of this very particular picture. Let me make use of this very particular picture. Then I click on this. Then, as regards the align, then I click on align. Do I want this on the left? Look at it. Do I want it on the top? Then we have it top. I, have, I want it at the bottom. Then I want it on the right. I want it on the center. But I want it to be in the middle. You can see the movement. I want it to be on the left, then I want it to be the right. You can see, if I want it top, I click on top. But if I want it to be on the left, I click on left. If I want it to be on the center, I click on center, the right. The bottom, and so on and so forth. That is how to go about this. Then advance, I've explained this previously as well. Probably you have a particular... Uh, dimension you want the uh, object or the element to be positioned then you insert it here that is on position now the next thing i'm going to discuss is a uh, nudge not to waste much of our time i've explained this previously but just let me just hold on it then you just you can continue clicking on it 
just to use it to move our object or text from one place to another. Or probably you can just long press it. You can see. Once you long press it, it will be moving. From the area you want it to be placed. That is it. That is the essence of the notch. Now, the next thing I'm going to discuss is this very particular information. But don't worry. I'm going to discuss this information. It's an interesting uh, feature. But don't worry. I will explain it. If I want to explain element as a topic on its own, don't worry. I will explain that to you so that you don't get confused. Now, the next thing is uh, more. You click on more. Look at it. Copy. I've explained this, how to go about it. The paste, I've explained it as well. Still the same function with what I've explained when I was discussing uh, on the issue of uh, the editor panel when the text is being highlighted. Still the same thing. Now, take for instance, if I should click on this very particular object, then I click on select, I click on this, then I click on this. You can see, make it three object. Now, I want to group them together, then I will come here to group. You can see, I've grouped all the three objects, I mean the three elements together. That is how to go about that. Now, let me undo it. Then, the same thing with bring forward, bring to front, it's still the same thing. If I should click on it now, you will observe what will happen there. Send to back, you can see that we're having it at the back of the object then bring to front you can see bring to front to front then send to back now bring forward then send backward you can see you can see bring forward then bring to front still the same thing so that is the importance of this then show timing i will discuss this on video making then the lock i've explained this previously as well see the same thing you don't have to waste much of our time the link i will explain this later don't worry now here you can see this this very particular picture if i should click on this replace background that is i want you to replace background i click on it you can see that it has replaced the background and if i don't want it i undo it now let me click on this then i click on the more then replace background. You can see, I want it to replace the background. That is the essence of uh, replace background. The next thing I'll be discussing, you can see, the other one, we're having a uh, replace background there. Well, if you look at this one, we're having detached image. Let me click on it. You can see what really happened. The image has been taken away from the frame. That is the essence of that. And if I want to replace it with background, I click on it. It is going to be replaced with the background. You can see. But I don't want it. Then let me undo it. By the time you are able to play around it, you understand better of the Canva editors. Now, then, this very particular apply colors. Let me click on it. Look at what is really happening to the colors. Look at it. Look at it as they are changing. That is how to go about that. Let me undo it. Let me undo it so that I can move to the other one. Okay. Now, that is how to go about that. Now, the next thing I will be discussing is delete. Now, let me come to the more. Now, you can see we're having delete there. Then if I should click on delete, it is going to be deleted. You can see. Or if I should click on this, then let me come here. More, then delete. You can see that is how to go about it. But I want to retain them. Now, the next thing I want to discuss here, let me try to work on this as well. Let me click on this frame. Now, let me come here. I click on this. Then I click on delete. That is how to go about uh, that very particular one. Then another thing I want to discuss, if you look at this object very well, I mean the elements, once I click on it, you can see it displays the color of the element let me click on this you can see that this very particular one this one is displaying the color as well look at it at times you might click on some element it might not bring uh, this look at it this one is not having any color 
It's not bringing any color. It's not displaying any color. Look at it. So that is what I want you to understand here. Look at this one as well. It displays a uh, color, but I'm coming on that. This has to do with the background of this very particular frame. But don't worry, I will still explain that when I want to explain element in details. In the case whereby you have this, all you need to do, you can just come here to change the color of the element. You can change it from here. You can see, it depends. Then here, you have a, you have what? What are the colors? Then these are the colors you have in here. You can also work on this as well. Just try to play around there and see to how it is. Look at it. But I'm okay with it. Then I will need to undo it. So that is how to go about it. Just try to play around with the editor panel of the camphor. I mean, at the workplace area of the camphor, you, you understand better of these very particular features. The fifth editor panel I'll be discussing is the pop-up white edge cuff rectangle that appear or that surround the element box. This is what I'm referring to. This very particular panel, you can see. You can see it around the element box. Now, let me click on this very particular three dotted horizontal line that we're having here. The first one, let me click on it. Now, this is what we're having there. Is the shortcut to this very particular three dotted horizontal line we're having at the bottom that I've explained previously in the fourth editor panel. Now, if I should click on it, we are going to have everything we are having at the bottom. You can see. There's no need of explaining this. The next one is delete icon. If I should click on it, it is going to be deleted. I undo it now. Let me click on the element. The next one is this very particular duplicate icon. Then I click on duplicate. I've explained that previously as well. So that is that on that. Now, the next one is this very particular rotate icon. Now let me rotate it. If I want the picture to be positioned in this way, I leave it this way. And if I want it this way, I rotate it. And if I want it this way, upside down, it depends on your choice. Now, let me undo it. So that is how to go about this very particular feature. Then another thing I want to explain, where we're having this rotate icon, you observe that... Uh, we're having only the rotate icon there. All because this image or the element is bigger. Now, let me make it smaller. Now, let me make it smaller. Now, this is it. You can see that uh, a particular button has appeared there. This very particular button in form of a plus icon. Then you use it to move the object from one place to another. That is that on this. The sixth editor panel I will be discussing is the bottom editor panel. Now, look at it. This has to do with two things. If I click on this, look at it. Make sure you click on the page. Look at it. Look at the purple line that surround the page. That is what I'm trying to say. Look at it. All these uh, purple line. That means uh, you've selected the whole page. Now, look at the editor panel that appears here i'm going to explain this now another thing is that if you select the page from the show page thumbnail that we have in there what you are going to have underneath here is quite different from what you are going to have look at it if i should click from here look at it we're having add page duplicate delete and so on and so forth but if i should select the page from the workplace area look at it from here look at what we're having there we have a replace color and so on and so forth. Now, let me discuss on the first one. If it is selected on the workplace area of the camphor. Now, look at it. Now, if I should click on the page, meaning that the background, I want to change it. Then I can now click on replace. Now, do I have any background? Then let me click on the background. Then let me click on blue. You can see that the background has been replace with this very particular one now let me undo it let me click on replace i can pick any background from probably the gallery upload photos 
the background and so on and so forth not to waste much of our time this very particular photo is the photo from the camera. the same thing the background and the video now let me click on this photo if i should click on this let me click on this it is going to replace the background you can see now let me undo it that is how to go about this then the second one we're having the color here now if i should click on the color I can now change the color of the background. I change it to this or to, to the lemon green or to red. It depends on your choice. Or if I want the gradient, I can come here. This is the gradient color. I can click on this. Look at it. I can click on this. Now, that is how to go about this. Then let me click on this or this. Then another thing I want to explain here, if I want solid color, I click on this, but I don't want solid color. Let me go back to the gradient color. I prefer this. Now, let's assume I don't want that. This is what I can still do. Now, I click on this very particular color box where we're having a white circle with plus sign in it. I click on it. Then look at the gradient. Look at the gradient. Now, if we have picked solid color, this is what we are going to have here. But I don't want any solid color. Let me come here. Then the gradient. Now, look at the gradient very well. If you look at it very well, carefully, you observe that uh, we're having two colors here. Now, the first one is this yellow. Now, the same thing, we're having another color, which is a pink. This is it. The gradient, look at this. This is the style. Uh, if I should click on this, look at the yellow. We have it at the top, while the pink at the bottom. The first one, look at it. The yellow by the left, while the pink by the right. Then if you look at the third one, you observe it. Then the fourth one, look at it. We're having the yellow at the center. Then look at this. We're having the yellow at the edge corner of the left-hand side. Now, if I prefer this, let me pick the one in the middle. Now, let's assume I want different pink aside from this one. Then I can now click on this pink. Then I can now work on this. Look at it. Then I can now try to do some certain thing on this. That is that. Then I click on the yellow. Then look at the yellow as well. It depends on how you want to do it. That is it. And if I want green, I can come to where we're having the line color. Then I can now come here if I want green. Then let me fix it here. You can see. You can see what is really happening. You can see. Then that is how to go about this very particular feature. Now, let us zoom in the thickness of the green. I can just come here underneath the line color. Then I can now work on it you can see i drag it to the front then to the back you can see that is how to go about this very particular feature then let me come to the pink if i want the pink as well i want to increase the you can see so you come there to work on it that is how to go about this very particular feature and we should not forget i've explained this very particular function previously i mean this color picker I don't need to be discussing this. I've already explained it previously. That is how to go about the gradient color. Now, aside from that, let's assume I want a solid color for the work. Then I can now come here. These are the solid color. Let's assume I want a green. Then this is green. Then, or let me undo it. Let me undo it. Let's assume I want another color. I want green here. That is the solid color. The first one I've explained is a gradient color. Let's assume this very particular solid color. I want to work on it. Then I will click on this very particular color box where we're having white circle in it with a plus sign. I click on it. Then I can now click on solid color. You can see. Now, let's assume this very particular color. 
I want another gray. I want a lighter gray. There you can see. I can come here. You can see. To play around this. Okay. That is how to go about this very particular feature. Now, another thing I want to discuss is this very particular timing. But I will explain this if I want to discuss on video making. Don't worry. Then, animate. I'm going to explain this as well. Though, I've explained little on it previously, but I will still explain it later. Then, layers. I've explained layers as well, but not to waste much of our time. The next one is more. Then I click on more. Then we have copy paste. Then we have lock background. If you want to lock the background and I click on delete. If I want to delete the background, you can see I've deleted the color of the background. Then let me undo it. Immediately I click on the page. You can see that we're having this very particular panel here. As you click on this delete icon, it means I want the background of the design to be deleted. I click on it. Look at it. It has been deleted. Now, the second one is the three dotted horizontal line. Let me click on it. So we are going to have the same thing we are having here. What we are having there, if I should click on it, look at it. This very particular three dotted line and what we are having there, still the same thing. We are going to have the same thing there. Another thing I want to discuss is this very particular feature. If I click on the page, I mean the design, from the show page thumbnail, let's assume I click on this, you can see. Look at what appears there. It's quite different from when you click it from the page direct. Look at it. If I should click on it, look at it. I click it from the workplace area of the Canva. What appears is quite different from when I click on it from here, you can see. You can see what appears. Now, this very particular plus icon where we're having the add page. It means I want this page to be added. I want to create another page. Now, I click on it. You can see. This to add another page to it. Let me click on it. I want another page to be added. That is the meaning of this. Now, let's zoom in. This very particular color in the page. I don't want it. Then I can click on it. Then I will click on delete. Then I click on this as well. Then the color, I click on it on the page. I delete. I don't want the color there. Now I can now insert the page or anything I want here. Now, that is how to go about that. Let me undo it. Now, another thing I want to explain is the duplicate. The duplicate here means I want this page to be duplicated. Now I click on duplicate. We are going to have the exact thing. You can see. I click on duplicate. You can see making three. And if I want this to be duplicated, I click on it. You can see. Making two pages. That is the essence of when you click on the page from the show page thumbnail. Now, another thing I want to discuss here is this very particular function. Let me click on it from the show page thumbnail. Then we have delete. You can now click on delete meaning that the page will be deleted. You can see. Let me click on this. Delete. It has been deleted. But I want them back. I click on undo. So that is the essence of that one. Then this is a particular color. If I should click on this color, it means I want to change the color of the background. I've explained this previously, so I don't need to be going to this, not to waste much of our time. Then this timing as well, I will discuss this and animate. I will discuss the two if I want to discuss on video making. Then these layers, I've explained this as well. And this very particular more. That is how to go about this. Then let me quickly ship in this as well. Look at this very particular grid that we're having in a white circle. If I should click on it. I've explained this on my introductory part of the video. Look at it. This is it. That is, I want our design to be in grid format. Though I've explained this previously, when I'm trying to explain uh, this very particular, look at it, few settings. Now, show grid view. You can see, show grid view. So I've explained this previously. I don't need to be explaining this again. Now, let me go back 
so that we have it for show page thumbnail look at it so that is it that is all i need to explain on this now we're moving to the last editor panel of course there are so many aspects of canva that i won't be able to cover fully in this video tutorial because of the time frame therefore drop me a comment and thumbs up below in the comment section to let me know if you want me to create a comprehensive continuation video on canva tutorial for beginner part 2 where i will discuss fully the seventh canva editor panel that is the bottom purple circle with the plus sign editor panel or tools where you will have access to the following how to use element in canva how to search in the canva library how to search in the canva library and add element to your designs how to use shapes in canva how to use colors in canva how to use frames in canva how to use collections in canva how to use photos in canva how to search for animated and static element in canva how to upload or anything you find useful in canva etc don't forget to drop me a comment below to let me know finally subscribe to my channel and like the video to continue your canva journey since i have so many useful tutorials here already and many more kindly share the video with your family and friends bye for now